Hey guys, Crypt the Lazy Geek here and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to do a quick video about this filter here from a completely unknown manufacturer. They contacted me and they asked me whether I wanted to review one of their filters. And because they're completely unknown and I like underdogs because competition is always good for us, the customers in the hobby, I accepted. They're basically saying that they want to achieve chroma level quality at even cheaper prices than brands like Antlia are providing right now. So they're providing these days LRGB uh, filters. They're also providing HSO3 nanometer bandpass filters. And this one is a competitor, a direct competitor to the Antlia ALPT filter, which is a dual band hydrogen alpha oxygen-3 filter for emission nebulae that has 5 nanometer uh, FWHM bandpasses. So the, the bandpasses are as tight as basically 5 nanometers, which is pretty good in our hobby. This helps fight light pollution in very light polluted cities like here in Tokyo, which is always appreciated. The kicker is it is $60 cheaper than the Antlia. The Antlia LPT, I believe, is around $380 US dollars, whereas uh, this one is 320 US dollars. So it's not cheap by any means, but it is cheaper. And any competition that helps to drive the price down while still respecting the advertised specifications is a win for us. So the company that makes those filters is called uh, Hangzhou Guangna Technology Co LTD. And so again, I'm sure you haven't heard of them. The filters themselves, uh, when you open them, uh, which it's very interesting, it has like a very soft kind of uh, sarandap uh, kind of feel to it. It's the first time I see that for a filter box. I kind of like it. But on the side, it's written that the brand name seems to be Shime. So yeah, take that as you will. I'll put the link, by the way, in the description if you are interested. Uh, also disclosure, this is a loaner item. I will have to return it when this video is done and I'm not getting any financial reward or anything like that for this review. So their claims about their filters and in particular this filter are quite lofty. So they say that they have an ultra high transmission peak of over 98% transmission at the 656 0.3 nanometer uh, bandpass for hydrogen alpha. And they say that they block, uh, uh, they are at 5 OD outside of the bandpasses. So, uh, it, which is the standard blocking for this kind of uh, filter, which is always good. And they also claim like they used fused silica for superior thermal stability, flatter surface flatness and higher transmittance. They also claim that uh, their filters are precisely two millimeters uh, thick. Uh, to guarantee optical path length. And they also say that their design will minimize halo effects. Also saying that because they're using five nanometers uh, band passes, you know, it's gonna have better signal to noise ratio, better light pollution rejection than seven nanometer band pass dual band filters like the Optolong L Extreme R, the SV, Boni SV. 220, but uh, duh, <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Although they also kind of go a bit too far, in my opinion, saying like, oh yeah, it's, it might actually be even better than three nanometers filters because our transmission is higher. Ah, uh, yeah, maybe not. But anyway, like from those claims, some of them I can check effectively. I can notably with my spectrometer check the positioning of the band passes, the width of the band passes, and by pointing this at a very bright star, I can check for halos as well. And so that's what we're going to be doing. I did not have the opportunity to actually test this on an emission nebula due to the wonderful weather that we've been having here in Tokyo. We are now just entering the rainy season, so I won't be able to do that for a while. And so for now, it's gonna be the spectrometer results, which should tell us everything we need to know about the filter, plus the halo test on a very bright star, I believe I chose Al-Qaeda, which tells us about the halos for the filter, which is great to know. And also I did manage to take some exposures of M51 as I wanted to add H-alpha oxygen-3 data to a broadband image of the galaxy. So we'll be able to have a quick look at that. So I'll need to show you those results on my computer, so let's go inside. Besides that, don't forget that if you're new to the channel, you may consider subscribing, in which case, welcome to the channel. You can also take the time to like the video. It truly helps the video out and it takes one second. And let me know in the comments how you think this filter will fare compared to the fairly lofty claims of the manufacturer. Of course, I'll have all links in the video description. If you want to support the channel even more and you're planning on buying anything from a Gina, High Point, First Light Optics, or even Amazon for that matter. If you do so after clicking the links that I have in the description, it helps the channel out at no cost to you. 
If you want to help even more directly, you can join my channel as a member. There's a join button that's next to subscribe. Or you can join my uh, Patreon as a supporter. Every bit helps you guys. You make the channel possible. I, I say it every time. It's absolutely true. And I am deeply thankful. Anyway, let's get inside for the results. Okay, we're inside and we can see the results for this uh, little filter. And on my screen, I have the results of the spectrophotometer measurement. I use a spectrometer that cost me around 2,300 euros. It's no longer the best around, but it's from a startup called Goya Lab in France. And I calibrate this spectrophotometer before each measurement using a mercury argon lamp as well as a neon lamp to make sure that we have the best precision possible. And here are the results of the measurement of that filter. Uh, something to note is that the transmission uh, is underestimated. It is underestimated the more that the band passes are narrow and five nanometer is pretty narrow. So when you look at the transmittance, it would actually be slightly higher, maybe two or three uh, percent more than what is indicated. I'll be using cursors to go through the curves, as you can see here, and the results are on the right hand side. So the X axis is the wavelength of the light and the Y axis here is the percentage of uh, trans transmittance. And if we, call, we recall, they uh, basically guarantee or they are advertise very high transmittance in H alpha and we're going to be able to check that. The uh, results also are visible on the top right here with the X cursor being the wavelength of, li of light and the Y cursor being the transmittance and it adjusts with where the cursor is. We have a second curve, by the way, that weird uh, S shape here, our one over X type of shape. This is the first derivative of the uh, filter measurement curve and it helps me find where the center is. That's where it becomes zero. And it also helps me find where the uh, FWHM full width half max is using the peaks on it, right? Where the second derivatives would be zero. That way we can measure pretty precisely both the center uh, of the band pass of the filter as well as its width. So what are results? Let's start with oxygen three. Uh, we notice that the center of the band pass is at 501 nanometers, where the target was 500.7 nanometers. This is perfect, absolutely perfect. So that's really, really good to see. And it's a good start. And uh, you can see that the transmittance on that point of the cursor is 86%. Uh, so in real life, it's probably more closer than to 87, 88, 89%. So that is very respectable. Although we can see that oxygen three is definitely has less transmission than H alpha, which was something that was also the case with the Antlia ALPT filter. Now, what about the full width half max? It basically goes roughly from 498.5 to uh, roughly uh, 503.5. So that's exactly five nanometers. If we're a bit more pessimistic, it could be 5.5 nanometers, but it is very close to spec. So for now, with oxygen three, I am very satisfied by what I see. Okay, now let's have a look at H alpha. So H alpha, where is the center? Uh, the center is roughly here, which is uh, 656.5 nanometers. Our target is 656.3 nanometers. So we are definitely, again, perfectly centered. So this is quite rare that I see both of those like that perfectly centered. And the Antlia ALPT filter that I reviewed a long time ago and then that I tested with my spectrometer once I had bought the spectrometer did not perform as well in uh, the Antlia ALPT filter, which is the most direct competitor to this filter, I would say. The band passes were shifted a bit towards the uh, left, actually, which is a bad thing uh, because uh, it was fast optics you can run out of bandpass very quickly due to bandpass shift. So here seeing that things are very centered for both bandpasses is very, very good. That said, it is possible that the sample that I got might have been pre-selected to have good results. So keep that in mind as we are checking this. There is one thing that makes me say it's probably not the case because there's something bad about the uh, H-alpha bandpass. We'll get to that in a moment. Uh, so anyway, what is the transmittance towards the top? It's around 94.5%, uh, uh, maybe 93.5%. So maybe in real life, we're closer to 96, even maybe 97%. That's excellent as well. And it's very close to their promise of 98% with super high transmission. So yeah, I mean, it looks like for now, the, the, uh, the filter is performing up to specs 
But uh, if we look at the full width half max, we go from roughly 654 to 660 and maybe even 660.5. That is a 6 to 6.5 nanometers band pass. This is not at all 5 nanometers. So, I mean, it's not the first time that I see that. I mean, the Antlia ALPT, once I had gotten the um, spectrometer and the H alpha was also 6 to 6.5 nanometers instead of the 5. So, um, not worse than the Antlia ALPT filter, actually better, but still not up to spec. Should we rejoice? Maybe not. I don't know, it, it, I'm getting tired of filters that are close to specifications, but you know, no cigar. And as an end user, if you don't have a spectrometer to test it out, you would never ever know. That's how things are. But still, I mean, overall compared to other filters, I mean, it's $60 less than the Antlia ALPT. And at least the sample they sent me is better than the sample that Antlia had sent me, which, and they also had sent me a sample that they could have pre-selected. Okay, let's have a look at the star halo situation. So I did uh, six five minute long exposures on a very bright star, Al Qaed, and obviously the full stack is 30 minutes. So we should see how much of a halo there is compared to the promise of no halo. This is used with my uh, Quattro 150p Newtonian telescope with the filter in a filter drawer between the coma corrector and the camera sensor. And without further ado, this is the result from far away, we can see definitely we do have a halo, which is there, okay. Zooming in, you can see two things. One, I'm not completely in focus. Sorry about that, that's uh, my issue, but the, the halo is definitely visible. And I'm going to try to also do a quick background extraction to see if after background extraction, the contrast between the halo and the background is even worse, which would be, you know, bad because then it means the ha halo is more visible and this is the result, oh yeah. Uh, it's not great, is it? Uh, so, uh, you know, kind of workable, uh, but yeah, there is definitely a halo there. Just be aware of that. I know a lot of people don't like halos. I personally don't mind them. It's kind of a proof that it was taken with my amateur equipment, but you know, I understand that many people don't like that. Quib from the future wants to interrupt this pro program to tell you that since I recorded the original uh, footage, I actually managed to take a photo with this particular filter using my RedCat 51, sorry, refractor and pointing it on the Swan or Omega Nebula, which is really low on the sky in the Tokyo smog. It's the most terrible thing to image because it's really hard, but I managed to get 2.5 hours, actually even less, roughly two hours and 25 <laughs> minutes of data on that target, which is nowhere remotely enough. And I have the result to show you. Uh, but I want to be clear that this is just like as a sample, as an example, as part of a review, it's cool to show, but it doesn't bring you much because I could obtain really good results with much wider band passes. There's all sorts of stuff that I can do to make images better. So it's extremely subjective. But just so you see what is possible with this filter, with a Red Cat 51 and an ASI 585MC Pro camera. This is what we get on the Omega Nebula with from Tokyo, just uh, 2.5 roughly hours of uh, data, which is actually pretty cool. Of course, it's quite noisy, etc., etc. And as I process it, just to show you how it gets processed, I would remove the uh, background. I would do some blur exterminator, noise exterminator, all of that uh, fun stuff. I would remove the stars then I would stretch the image. This is what the image looks like stretched. So it's a pretty cool kind of uh, image. Going back to when it still had stars, we do have a fairly bright star here. It doesn't exhibit any really visible halo. So that's actually a good thing. And it could be because of refractor versus Newtonian, or it could be simply that this star is far less bright than something like, I think it was Al Qaed that I used to test. So there you go. Uh, in normal use, it's probably not a big deal. So we can glean that from this example image. And then once I've stretched the image starless, there's you know the usual color manipulations we can do to get close to an SHO palette. And this is roughly what uh, I obtain in the end. Nothing absolutely wonderful, but still you know pretty good for 2.5 hours 
from Tokyo on a target that's so low in the sky. This is basically the final result with the stars put back in the image. And yeah, I think it looks, uh, it looks pretty nice. But again, this is not so relevant as part of a review per se. It's just to give you an idea of what's possible with this class of filters, generally speaking. And another quiz from the future here. I had sent the test results with the defects uh, descriptions to the um, filter manufacturing company and they got back to me with uh, some sort of statement, which I think was relevant. So uh, let, just letting you know, basically they're saying that one, those are randomly selected samples. They've taken pictures of Vega. They have an example of a 20 minute exposure on Vega, apparently with no halo whatsoever. So they suspect that my particular sample had an issue and they're looking at ways to add like a uh, halo testing for the fil for the individual filters that they're selling. And they're also saying that because of my observations, their pilot batch of filters, uh, of which mine was apparently just one of them, will not be put up for sale. So only further batches after they they've looked at all of that will be available for sale. They're also saying that the uh, six nanometer in H alpha was intentional. Um, and they'll make that clearer in their product description, which yeah, I mean, that's, that's uh, the bare minimum. But more interesting to me is that they are saying that they will provide an individual filter test with each filter that is, that is sold that is specific to that filter. That's actually a big deal. So I'm really happy if they actually uh, go through with that. And of course, they stress as well that my filter sample was from their first pilot batch test, which as I mentioned earlier, will not be on sale. Only further batches will be on sale. Okay, that's pretty much it from that manufacturer. And with that, back to quit from the past. And so that's it. We have a filter that has some halo, definitely less than something like the uh, SV Boni SV220, but then it's like 200 more dollars than that. And uh, while the band passes were perfectly centered, which is absolutely amazing in my book, and, and just for that, it's probably worth the price of admission, assuming that the other filters perform the same. How much of a lottery there is, that is something I do not know and I cannot guarantee. Uh, but even if there had been a lottery, they didn't send me the best sample uh, possible because the H alpha, while the oxygen three band pass was fine, the H alpha band pass was too wide, even though it was perfectly centered with very high transmission. Six to 6.5 nanometers is definitely not five nanometers. So should you buy this filter? Uh, I don't know. Do you need it? Uh, there's alternatives out there, but there is always the probability of lottery. Um, so it's very, always very, very difficult to give filter recommendations there. Uh, but at least you've seen how, what my own sample that I received uh, looked like. And unfortunately, you'll have to make up your mind or your decision based on that. I would say overall these days, if you don't mind halos, and you're not in a super light polluted city, then seven nanometer band passes are probably more than good enough. And the most budget of those filters is the SV Boni 220. My sample that I bought randomly from Amazon worked really well. The filter overall, I'm very satisfied with the band pass placement, but right there is always a but. So that's it for this video. I hope it was interesting to you guys. As always, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like the video. It takes one second, it really helps. If you're new, you can subscribe and leave a comment to let us know what you think of this filter from a brand that came out of nowhere, at least as far as I'm concerned. But anyway, more important than all of that, don't forget whenever you can to look up at the stars and I'll see you next time.